Hey Shag Kids, Curtis Tucker here, aka Shags, with another episode of A Shaggy Duck Life. I'm glad you guys are here for another episode. I am back! Vacation is over, Disney World is behind me, and I am here. Follow along as I act as an entrepreneur here in the uh, Great Plains of the United States in Enid, Oklahoma. You guys follow my journal and you guys can see what's going on behind the scenes of Shaggy Duck Studios, Enid Buzz, and some of those other businesses that I own. I am putting a video together of all of the adventures that we had in Orlando, Florida, and I was going to uh, use the video for this podcast. Uh, don't forget that you can watch this podcast on youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV. And I was going to have the video running while I was my voice was doing the podcast, but um, it's an hour long. I squeezed six days, four parks into one hour and uh, went really heavy on lots of different audio. And to get the full effect of the video, you guys probably would have had to watch it twice, which would have been two hours. And I know you guys do not want to watch my vacation video twice. So what I'm going to do is uh, record this podcast and just a normal, uh, straightforward video of me on YouTube. And then also on the YouTube channel will be, uh, hopefully I'll finish it up tomorrow, which is Friday, uh, and I will have that video of uh, Disney on there. And so today's episode is kind of talking about uh, the adventures that we had while we were in Disney, some of the things that happened, how Disney has changed, some tips uh, to get through Disney, and then also how I was able to uh, continue working for a full six days while I was on vacation. And uh, so don't forget that uh, I do have a Patreon account at patreon.com slash shags. And that's S-H-A-G-G-S. You guys can go there, go to the YouTube channel, Curtis Tucker TV on YouTube. And also you can email, a, email me at shags at shaggyduck.com or go to curtistucker.com. Check out the blog there. I've got a lot of uh, blog posts and photos, videos, more stuff there. So just appreciate you guys following along, following me. I uh, did not mean to not have an episode last week. I just did not have time to get it done. So basically what happened on this whole deal is my wife decided she wanted to take a big family vacation and go all out and she planned everything. And basically up until almost the last minute, I didn't even know exactly what we were doing. I just knew that we were going to, basically I was going to be out of my studio for a full six days, which uh, kind of scared me. But um, I figured, you know, I could get it done. The cool, the really cool thing about working for yourself and especially me working for myself online mainly is that pretty much wherever I have my phone, uh, I can be working because I can get email, I can video, I can take pictures, I can upload all that to the internet, I can type blog posts, I can share things from Facebook, um, I can get into WordPress on my phone and update blog posts. And so basically I can run, uh, and, and so my, you know, the main part of what I do every day right now is enidbuzz.com. And so that's basically what I needed to keep up. And so I was able to uh, keep, keep up for seven, uh, this full six days that I was gone. And, and what I did to, to, to kind of prepare for that was um, I had a few posts and a few photos that I knew I was going to be using all week. Um, kind of the, I do holiday, a uh, list of the holidays every day. I kind of had, had all that stuff uh, pre-done for almost every day. And I had that in a file, so all I had to do was copy and paste. But basically, I'm posting um, all, I, I post every hour on the Enabuzz Facebook page from 7, 7.30 in the morning till 8.30 at night. So um, I did have a lot of posts that I needed to fill. And again, um, a lot of times what I would do was um, the night before, I would try to get almost all the posts done for the next day, and then I could just spend the whole day doing what I wanted. And then that next night, I would do the same thing for the next day. Now, sometimes if it was late or if I was tired and I didn't get everything done, I would try to at least get the morning 
uh, posts and blog posts updated and, and everything published, the weather updates published. And then throughout the day, when we were at some of the Disney parks, while I was standing in line or eating or something, I was able to update the post for the rest of the day. And basically uh, updated all that stuff from my phone at night. Uh, I was using my iPad and my uh, computer. There was uh, one night that I updated a lot of obituaries on the enidbuzz.com website. And to do a lot of those photos, it's just a lot easier to use the computer. And so anyway, I was able to continue working, um, was able to answer emails for some of the other businesses I did. And uh, then Todd and I had pre-recorded uh, the 70s Buzz podcast, so I didn't have to worry about that. We did not get a Buzzhead radio podcast recorded for last week, and I did not get a Shaggy Duck Life podcast. Um, so, uh, so here I am back again. Just wanted to give you guys kind of a behind the scenes. If you have never been to Disney, uh, check out the video that I'm going to be posting, and it basically shows you all four parks. Like I said, with you know, inside of an hour, it kind of zips through them. There's not a huge amount of detail, but uh, at least you kind of get a glimpse of what uh, what what they kind of look like, some of the rides, uh, some of the attractions, things like that. And, um, you know, if you really, really want some tips or have some questions, uh, email shags at shaggyduck.com and I'll ask my wife because she's, again, she's the one that planned it all. Um, we had taken the girls to uh, Magic Kingdom 14 years ago, and I believe we spent either two or three days at Magic Kingdom. We did not go to any of the other parks at that time. The kids were little. The girls were little. It was... Uh, there was a lot of princess stuff going on, and so we just kept them at Magic Kingdom, and they had a blast. And so this time, what we decided to do was one park uh, every day for four days, and now things are a lot different. So basically, from what I'm gathering is, uh, you basically almost have to have the Disney app on your phone to keep up with everything. You have to book which parks you're going to go to ahead of time. You can't just like show up to like Magic Kingdom one day and just get in the park. I guess if you don't have a reservation, you don't get into the park. And then if you reserve Magic Kingdom for Monday, but change your mind the night before that you want to go to Animal Kingdom, you can't get into Animal Kingdom until two o'clock that afternoon. You actually have to go to the park that, uh, you have uh, reserved and so and then to get into all the parks you either have to have a wristband or you have to have a kind of an id card and so the cool thing is is once you reserve all of the park reservations that you're going to do they send you a box of bands in the mail and uh, before they send them to you you get to you got to pick them out so here's the, here was the band i picked out it's the mickey mouse one kind of a uh, kind of a checkeredy looking pattern, light blue. And so basically this, you know, this bought me things in stores. It paid for meals. It got me on right. You had to, so you had to have this to get into the park. And then once you were in the park, you had to scan this every time you got on a ride. And um, man, there's a whole, there's a whole podcast episode on, on lightning passes. And so Basically, you know, if you've gone to amusement parks, you know that uh, pretty much all of them are packed anymore and waits on rides are anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours, basically on pretty much every ride. But what Disney has done is they've come up with, you know, you pay whatever money you're going to pay to get into the park. And then you have the, the regular lines, which they call the standby lines, which are 30 minutes to two hours for every ride. But then they have this other line that's, you know, it's really quick. There's nobody in it. And it's called the uh, lightning pass. And you pay like an extra 15 or $20 per person per ride to do that. But basically what that amounts to is you get in on those rides within 10, maybe 15 minutes or even sooner. And so... But a lot of those you have to book ahead of time. And then also the restaurants, if you want to eat at a nice restaurant at one of the parks, you have to make reservations for those like weeks ahead of time. And so there's a lot of pre-planning 
uh, if you want to get the full effect of Disney. Now, you can just go, um, you know, but man, I would sure find out all the planning. So anyway, so uh, there was only, I believe, two rides out of the four days that we had to stand in line that we didn't have like a lightning pass. Um, and one of them was the Tower of Terror, uh, the Hollywood Tower Hotel in Hollywood Studios. And we did stand in that line for two hours. So that's the most we stood in line. One of the Star Wars rides um, said it was like 30 minutes. So we stood in the line. It ended up being two, no, it ended up being an hour. Um, but for four days, uh, that's not bad for only having to stand in lines uh, that long. And basically we were trucking from, you know, once we got into a park, you know, there's a lot of walking. I mean, we were putting on 7, 10, 12 miles a day uh, going all over the park. And, you know, there's a lot of rules to these lightning passes. You know, you can only use one per ride per day. But then once you have one ride booked, you can't book another ride until you've ridden the other ride. And then you're only, uh, each ride is only limited to so many lightning passes. And that's why we could not get one to the Tower of Terror because um, everybody had already reserved their lightning passes and we waited too long. And, and I, it's just, uh, luckily my wife kept up on all that. I literally did not even open the app. And, um, and, and so what I used to love about going to Six Flags with uh, my buddy back in the day in the 70s was you would get those really fun cartoon maps of the park and it would have all the rides and the stores and, and all the little pathways and get you where you want to go. Well, now basically you open up the Disney app and it kind of helps you, tells you which direction to go to the rides and how to get through the park. And so basically everything you do uh, pretty much goes through that app and, and, and those wristbands. And so it's just a lot different than, than what it used to be. Um, and it just seems like it's more scheduled. Uh, we did, I, we had a blast, um, got to ride all of the major rides that we wanted to and uh, eat at a lot of the, the restaurants. Now, thinking back, um, we've kind of decided that we probably would, would not go that fancy on the restaurants if we ever went back and would probably just hit you know, wouldn't reserve anything. We would just walk up to one of those restaurants and just eat whatever we could, you know, one to stand in line for. Um, you know, some of the restaurants had kind of swanky menus and so they were kind of limited and then you weren't exactly sure what you were getting. And, you know, it wasn't like you could just go into every restaurant and get a burger and fries. They didn't even have, you know, some of them didn't have salsa. Some of them didn't have, you know, this, a lot of them were themed restaurants. And so they didn't have, you know, what you're normally used to, ranch dressing, um, you know, things like that. So uh, we might have done the restaurant thing a little different. But uh, so it was a blast. So what we did was uh, here's how the week started off for me. Uh, the Friday before we left, we had to drive to Fayetteville to help uh, daughter number two pack up her dorm room into her car. And then we hung out and ate. And then it was her first baseball game that she got to Palm. It was the uh, University of Arkansas versus Vanderbilt. And I don't think the game started till like 6.30, 5.30, um, And so, so basically, uh, I spent m almost all day Friday, uh, you know, Saturday was the day before we were leaving for Disney. And so I really needed Friday. Well, and then let's back up to Thursday. So, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday would have been the days that I needed to pack, get things done, get all of my you know, I could have podcasted some, I could have um, got more done on Nina Buzz, but so Thursday was the day that uh, my podcasting partner from the 70s Buzz, Todd, went into the hospital and they were thinking they were going to have to put a stint uh, in, uh, you know, because he was having some heart issues. And so I spent several hours up at the hospital with him. Luckily for him, he did not have to have a stint. So everything went good there. 
Um, then he and I went and ate. So a lot of my Thursday went to that, and then almost all of my Friday went to driving to Fayetteville. The thing about that was the game was late in the evening, and not only did it go late, but it went into extra innings. And so by the time we got out of Fayetteville and drove all the way back to Enid, it was 3.30 in the morning. So we got home uh, to Enid at 3.30 in the morning on Friday. Uh, woke up on Saturday tired as a dog, but I uh, still had to get up and get things done. Uh, did not even pack all day Saturday because I was trying to run around, get things that I needed. Uh, doing some updates on Enid Buzz, doing some updates on emails, uh, quotes, uh, things like that. I had a website I was having to build that I was getting some things done. So, so very late at night on Saturday, I'm talking like maybe 11, 30, 12 o'clock, I started packing. And so our plane, I believe, was leaving Sunday morning at 5.30. Well, you have to get to the airport two hours early, so we needed to be at the airport at 3.30 a.m., um, and it takes an hour and a half to get to the airport, so that's two. So we basically needed to leave Enid between 2 and 2.30 a.m., on Sunday morning. And so it was 12 a.m. on Sunday morning when I started packing. And so I packed, got everything done by about, I think I was done at 12, no, one, one between 1 and 1.30. And so basically what I decided to try to do was lay down and take a one hour nap. Okay, so, and then remember, Friday night I didn't get home until 3.30 a.m. And so Saturday night, basically around 1.15, I laid down and took a one hour nap. The alarm went off, um, gathered up all the bags, got everybody, the girls had been asleep, got them up, loaded the car. And so we took off for Oklahoma City at about 2.40, 2.45. So we get down to Oklahoma City, um, park the car and get all our luggage and we are set. So we're at Will Rogers Airport and luckily everything went fine. The plane took off at 5.30. We flew from Oklahoma City um, to Houston. I napped a little bit very uncomfortably and then we flew from Houston to Orlando and I believe, can't remember, you know, we lose or we gain, gain an hour going back to the um, East Coast. I can't remember, one, one of the two. I think we gained an hour. Um, so it was in the afternoon, early afternoon, early afternoon on Sunday when we got to Orlando. So we uh, had to get our luggage, got us a rental car, and then drove directly to the hotel. So basically what we had done, we had not planned on going to an amusement park on Sunday, but, but um, there's a really f nice restaurant in what they call Disney Springs, which is a shopping area on the Disney World property. And to get a reservation there, you have to make the reservation weeks or months ahead of time. You can't, you, you can't just walk up to this restaurant and eat without a reservation. And so we had a reservation to eat there that night. So basically uh, unpacked, hung out at the hotel, looked around a little bit, and then drove over to Disney Springs, did some shopping. They had a, as you can tell if you're, if you're watching this video, I have my Ron John uh, t-shirt on. They had a Ron John shop there. And so I bought, I ended up buying three Ron John t-shirts there. You know, of course, I love all the surfing stuff. Um, great store. Love that. It was a great shopping area. Lots of Disney stores. Uh, lots of great things. And so let me think, was that the night? One night that we shopped there, it rained. There was a downpour. And I think it might have been might have been that night. I can't remember. Um, one of the nights that we were there, um, maybe not that night. Uh, so anyway, we ate at, it's called The Boathouse. Uh, highly recommend The Boathouse. Great food, 
uh, great rolls. Um, so we ate there. We ate at the boathouse. And then um, on the Disney Spring, no, it was that night that it rained. It uh, downpoured for probably 20, 20 to 30 minutes. And so we kind of got stuck. The, uh, my wife and youngest daughter got stuck in a store shopping and then my oldest daughter and I were under a kind of a just a protected area with a huge amount of people and I mean there was light I mean severe lightning and thunder and uh, torrential downpour and so we just basically hung out under that thing for about 20 minutes and waited uh, you know, I watched radar and I knew the rain was eventually going to stop pretty soon. So the rain stopped and then we went to a place called Gideon's Cookies. And these are like now have become like world famous cookies. They're like, it's like a huge cookie and then piled on top of it is like a, a quarter to half inch thick coating of you know, cookie dough or marshmallow or chocolate chips and caramel chips or, you know, and, and so, and, and it's, it's a really cool themed store and the, the, the flavor of cookies they come out with every week are really cool. So anyway, it's kind of one of those things where they have created this, this aura of, oh, you, you, have to get in line to get the cookies and it takes forever and so it's hard to get the cookies which makes more people want to get the cookies you know it's that whole um, you know you can't get the uh, cabbage patch doll so everybody wants one and so basically what you do is you walk up to this Gideon's cookies and you reserve a time to get in line because the to, the reservation to get in line is about two hours, two or three hours long. So what you do is you you reserve a time to get in line, and then you go shop for two or three hours, and that's what we did. And so then my wife gets a text and says, "Okay, now you can come stand in line." So <laughs> we went and stood in line. Now when you stand in line, because of the way they do it, you actually only stand in line for maybe fifteen minutes, and then when you go into the store, it was way it was just a cattle cattle gate thing you know and and a and a little window with the different cookies and there was no place to sit there was no i mean it was real I, I, it just boggles the mind uh it was cool but uh less than i expected but and so anyway so we got our cookies went back to the hotel finally got a decent night's sleep and then woke up monday and hopped in the rental and we didn't get up super early um, but we got up fairly early headed to uh, we decided to do Magic Kingdom on Monday and so the way to get into Magic Kingdom is you drive you go to the huge parking lot and they have these trams and uh, you get out of your car you walk up to the tram you wait till the tram is full once the tram is full they take off and they drive you to an area and then at that area, you walk through a scanner to make sure you don't have guns or bombs on you. Then you're within the entrance, and then you take you you to get into Magic Kingdom. You have to make a choice: either you're going to take a monorail or a ferry, which goes you know across the water. And uh, the 14 years earlier, we had always taken the monorail, so this time we decided to take the ferry. So we got on the ferry, you kind of have to sit there and wait until the ferry fills up, and then it takes off and it chugs across the water. So so basically, uh, car to park, park to tram, tram to gate, gate to ferry, ferry to the entrance of Magic Kingdom. So getting in and out of Magic Kingdom is not quick, um, even if you park close. You, you can't drive up to the park. You still have to cross, you know, get to the park. Uh, so anyway, so, so we finally get to Disney uh, Magic Kingdom and um, have to scan our bands and, you know, you have, to, you have to scan your band. It turns white. Then you put your finger in. It turns white. And then everything turns green. And then you're in. And that, I, basically, that matches your fingerprint with your wrist, wristband. So you can't let other 
people, family members, or friends use your wristband. So it's a crazy, crazy system um, that they've got, but it works. So then we were unleashed into uh, Disney Magic Kingdom, and uh, it ended up being a lot like it was when we were there 14 years earlier, but a lot different. I mean, uh, a lot of the layout was the same, but there were some areas that were completely different. Um, some of the big, I'm trying to think of some of the big things that we did at, at Magic Kingdom, and I can't even, off the top of my head, can't even think. Um, let me see if I can scroll through here. Um, I've, I've got the video because I'm working on the video right now. Um, okay, that was Boathouse, and then Gideon's Cookies, and then, okay, then we're on the tram, we're into the park. Uh, basically, lots of walking, so be prepared to walk. Um, of course, when you, when you enter, there's this long street with all these really cool little stores, and then the uh, Magic Castle is at the end, and that's the famous street where you usually stop, and these Disney people will come out and take your picture, or you just have somebody, um, you know, use your phone and take your picture. So we, we got the proverbial Magic Kingdom picture there. Uh, there was a ride that we were, that we had booked at a certain time, so we headed to that ride and for some reason I can't remember it was in the um, uh, what was the I can't even think of what the ride was but uh, it was pretty cool so the rides even a lot of the rides are different in Disney World um, now um, I got a text sorry um, Whereas a lot of the old rides used to like run on inside on tracks and stuff, now it's like these floors are just flat and you're like on this big, big round, I guess a magnet, and I think they're running on magnets and so they spin a lot more and they move around a lot more and everything is like IMAX size screens with uh, 3D and the seats that you're in go up and down and sideways and jerk and and things are sprayed into your face and so it's uh, the rides are a lot more interactive um you know i will have to say that if you are a roller coaster fiend like i am you're not going to be super happy about going to disney world none of the parks have hugely good roller coasters um, let me get that out of the way real quick uh probably our favorite roller coaster was Everest at Animal Kingdom. Uh, second was probably the Rock and Roll roller coaster at Hollywood Studios, and then the Toy Story uh, roller coaster at Hollywood Studios. Um, and then most of the roller coasters at Magic Kingdom are pretty powder puff. Um, I th uh, you know, I think we went up into Magic Mountain. I think Magic Mountain was the uh, first ride we went on, um, and it was a decent roller coaster, but it's in the dark and it's real jerky, um, but it was pretty fun. I, I believe that was the first ride we went on. And so uh, basically spent the day at uh, Magic Kingdom. I'm trying to think if we left. I think we might have left the park and taken a break. A uh, Cheney. Uh, being a college student, uh, likes to get her naps and sleep, and so, and then I knew, we knew we were going to be there late because we had reservations at a place to eat dessert, and then uh, we could sit there on this, like, patio and watch the fireworks. Fireworks at Disney are, uh, <coughs> excuse me, stupendous. Highly recommend um, taking the time to watch the fireworks at Magic Kingdom and Epcot. And so, so I, we did leave the park. I, we might have gone back to Disney Springs and shopped a little um, and then went back. Uh, did a, lot, a couple of 3D shows. We, we happened to be on our way to one of our rides with the Lightning Pass and uh, the parade comes and goes all the time. We happen to catch the parade, so I've got video of the parade. Uh, the parades are kind of long, but they're fun. A lot of all the people line the streets and watch the parades. Um, trying to look at my video of what 
kind of things that we did. Um, probably my least, and I hate, well, my least, so let me, so there, let me tell you the four parks real quick, if you don't know. If you don't know anything about Disney, um, there's four parks. There's Magic Kingdom, which is the old, you know, the original with the Magic, um, Magic Castle. And so that's, it's got, you know, a lot of Mickey Mouse stuff and a lot of the characters and all that. And then there's Animal Kingdom, which I wasn't, I had no idea really what Animal Kingdom was. Turns out it's a, an amusement park with rides and most of them are just themed towards animals. It has a lot more forest and a lot more jungle and a lot more greenery. So it looks kind of jungly but it's still just an amusement park. And then it does have a safari ride that does take you and you do see live animals. You, we saw giraffes and rhinos and elephants and they did have a gorilla uh, in enclosure with uh, gorillas there. And so, you know, part of the park actually is kind of like a zoo, but the other parts of it are basically an amusement park. Um, that's where the Everest ride, the Everest roller coaster was, and it was kind of a Yeti, uh, Bigfoot themed, and uh, it was, again, I think it was our favorite roller coaster. We rode it twice, um, probably could have rode it more if we had wanted to hang out there longer, but um, we probably spent the least amount of time at Animal Kingdom. I think at Animal Kingdom we, we got there, uh, my wife bought a preferred parking pass, which get you really close to the park. And and so the other three parks, you can park pretty close and you just get out of your car and you walk and you go in. Whereas at Magic Kingdom, you had to do all that extra stuff in between. So I believe we, we left Magic Kingdom and went and ate at a lodge that's also on the, um, the uh, Disney World property. So, so basically what Disney World is, it's like its own county in the middle of Orlando. And until all this stuff, political stuff was going on, basically uh, Disney World kind of governs itself. But, but Disney World has got its boundaries. And, and so if you're staying on property, um, you know, there's the four parks and then there's many, many hotels. And then there's the Disney Springs and then, and you don't ever really have to leave Disney World. There's, it's got its own highway system. And so you can basically get to all the parks and your hotel really quickly because there's not a huge amount of traffic because the outside Orlando traffic doesn't flow through Disney World. Only people, only the traffic in Disney World are the people in Disney World. And so much of the traffic is buses. They have it's got to be thousands of buses going all the time, taking you from one park to your hotel and all that. But we, we decided to rent a car. So, so basically, uh, the parks are Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, and then Epcot, which is kind of a park. It's an amusement park, but it has maybe more shopping and eating. And each part of the park is divided into a different country. And so the buildings and the music everything is kind of uh, themed towards whatever country you're in. So it's kind of cool. And then um, the fourth park would be Hollywood Studios, which is kind of like a remake of Hollywood and probably some of the better rides. And then um, because Disney purchased um, Star Wars, there's a whole Star Wars uh, amusement section in Hollywood Studios. I wasn't really ever thinking there is a huge difference between Hollywood Studios and Universal Studios. Universal Studios is not a Disney-owned property and it is not in Disney World, but it is in Orlando. And so we did not go to Universal Studios, we went to Hollywood Studios, which is the Star Wars, and, um, and then it also had a huge section uh, called Toy Story Land, which uh, the Toy Story, roller coaster was really what you would call tame, but it was a really fun roller coaster. It was your basically, your basic probably 1970s 
all-American roller coaster. Um, I really liked it, even though it wasn't real, you know, scary or anything, but it was just a really cool roller coaster there. Um, the Toy Story Land was really cool because it had huge Tinker Toys and huge plastic army men and um, just a really fun, colorful um, part. So, so those are the four parks. We stayed at a hotel called the Coronado Springs, which is on um, Disney World property. We probably got from our hotel to Disney uh, to um, Magic Kingdom in 10 to 15 minutes. We got to Epcot in probably three minutes. We got to uh, Animal Kingdom in probably 10 minutes and um, Hollywood Studios in probably 10 minutes. So everything's really close if you're if you stay within the uh, Disney World. And so, to, just to um, kind of rank the parks, uh, probably my least favorite was Animal Kingdom. Um, I was not really there to see animals, uh, you know, and so taking the animals out of the equation. Now, now the okay, so we were told that the best ride in all of Orlando was Avatar. Now, Avatar was at Animal Kingdom. Kingdom and Avatar is a a ride that you get on. They've got this whole themed area that looks like you basically feel like you're in the movie Avatar. You know they got the big trees and and everything, but you get on the ride and you're you're kind of sitting on this thing that feels like you're sitting on an individual motorcycle. But when the when the ride starts, you're on the back of one of those bird things but your your motorcycle thing your ride that you're on your seat that you're on like tips and and goes back and sideways and and smells come past you and wind blows in your face and and uh, when it flies over water water splashes in your face and it's huge the IMAX screen is huge and um, I'm trying to think if that one if we had 3d glasses on I can't remember if we had 3D glasses on in that one or not, but that ride, everything except for the G-forces, that ride was as close to being in a Thunderbird jet as anything I've ever been in. Um, just the feeling of the bird diving, you know, your, your thing that you were sitting on would dive and your eyes you know, we're looking at this huge screen, so in your mind, you, you actually felt like, and, and after a while, I think it started making all of us a little bit woozy, which when I flew with the Thunderbirds, there was a couple of times doing the spins and the up and down where I felt a little woozy. I never got sick, um, but the Avatar did, Cheney was not feeling well, our youngest daughter was not feeling super well at the very beginning of the trip. And so, and she's always had a little bit of um, motion sickness. And so if you do have, if you have any type of motion sickness at all, do not ride Avatar, you will not make it. Um, and so it made her a little bit sick, made her kind of want to quit the rest of the day. So it was a fight to keep her going for the rest of the day at Animal Kingdom. And, um, and so when I got off, I wasn't super woozy, but um, you know, had they left off about the last two minutes of the ride, I would have been a lot better. Um, there was just a lot of swooping down and up and 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 going zigzagging and and all that stuff. So, but that ride literally was you got the feeling of being in a jet. Um, and then there was another ride, and I can't remember it was at Epcot. I can't remember the name of it, but it was a ride where. You, you got in, you and one other person got in and you're sitting in a seat and visually you're looking like you're in the, the top of a rocket and you're about to blast off into space. And I believe that ride is on a centrifuge and so it gets to spinning. And while you're sitting in the ride, you don't, you don't realize you're spinning, but when that rocket ship takes off to leave Earth to go into space, because it's spinning, you, uh, I read that you are actually doing 2.5 Gs, and so that was the closest 
feeling to pulling G's in a when I flew with the Thunderbirds that I had ever felt. Um, you know, I think we did 6.3 G's uh, with the Thunderbirds, but that 2.5 G's, you could I could feel my chest, and and I tried to lift my head, and you know it was really really hard to lift my head at the at the takeoff, and that takeoff felt as close to taking off in the Thunderbird jet as as it did being actually being in the jet. And so if you want to get the experience of flying in a fighter jet, do that space ride. And there there's a there's like a blue and an orange and the blue if you go the blue direction it's really easy and you don't get the G forces if you go the orange direction. Um, and so that ride got to my oldest daughter a little bit. She was not uh, prepared to ride it twice in a row because my wife didn't get a ride it because she went on the blue side with my youngest daughter who was feeling a little queasy and so um, okay so those so so let me get back so now so we're on Monday um, we go shopping I believe hang out a little bit at the hotel we go back to Magic Kingdom um, we go to the the dessert area patio we have desserts they have all the alcohol that you can drink, it's all inclusive. Um, but I had work to do, I was tired, so I did not, you know, drink, um, could have, you know, drank a ton. But uh, so then the, the fireworks go off and the fireworks last a very long time. And so um, by that time it's dark. And then we decided to, at the last minute, to go to the haunted, um, haunted museum or haunted hotel whatever it is there in Magic Kingdom, which uh, caused us, you know, to be there kind of late because the line was pretty long because everybody flooded in. Um, that was not worth the wait, um, I would say, you know, unless you have kids. And so then, so then we headed back to the hotel, and so that was uh, Park One was Magic Kingdom. Went to bed, woke up, and I think the second day was Animal Kingdom, and I think we had a ride that we had to get to at a certain time, which was the Everest. And then we also had breakfast booked at that lodge at a certain time. So we had to get up. We zipped over to uh, Animal Kingdom, got the preferred parking, ran in, did the Everest ride, which was the really great roller coaster. I think we might have done one other ride, hopped back in the car, drove to the lodge, had a great breakfast, turned around, drove back to Animal Kingdom, um, did the park, did the safari, did Everest again. Um, our youngest daughter was pretty much toast and so we ended up leaving Animal Kingdom a little bit early and I think that, I think we may have ended up going back and shopping later that night at Disney Springs. I can't remember where all we had dinners at. Uh, and we might have had dinner, I don't know. I, anyway, so that was park number two. Uh, not hugely um, thrilling. And then uh, park number three was Epcot. So the next morning, which this would have been Wednesday morning, Wednesday morning, we didn't get up super early because I don't think we had anything booked too early. Um, got up, but we had an early lunch. And, uh, I don't, I don't know. I got up, went to Epcot. Epcot's pretty cool. Um, it's got that huge ball in front, which we never did go into. The time, the part of the day that we decided to try to go into the big ball, uh, it was closed for some reason. And I don't, I don't even know what is in the big ball. I don't know if it's kind of a ride or kind of a walkthrough thing. Um, so we didn't go through that, but Epcot was pretty cool. It had the Ratatouille 3D ride, which was pretty cool. Again, it was on those things that, that glide across the floor and they spin and then there's a big screen and, and the ride, the seat that you're on, you know, it tilts so you feel like you're going down and up and you get to a thing where a guy gets a mop and so you get splashed with water in your face and um, so Ratatouille was pretty cool. Um, um, there was a, um, I believe Epcot had the um, Speedway Racing ride, which was pretty cool. The first time we rode it, um, it broke down, and so we were inside in the middle of it, and probably 
10 minutes, had to sit there for 10 minutes. All the lights came on. A recording kept saying, you know, stay in your seat. And so I, I did a quick video, but it, it eventually um, started working. And, and so the ride, it, it kind of makes you feel like you're in a car and it skids and it goes fast and slows down. And, um, and then it eventually it goes outside and it's in and there's a track around the whole ride on the outside and it's tilted so you feel like you're uh, you know at Texas Speedway or something and it goes super duper fast which is really cool uh, we ended up riding that ride twice and the really cool thing is at the beginning of it you get to use a computer and build your own car and and you get to stretch and so you get to build a really cool funky looking car and then when the once the ride is over the people that were with you on the ride, it compares whose car did better in performance and speed and this and that, which makes it kind of fun. Uh, other things, there is a... Um, ah, de -de 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 something of the universe, uh, Masters, not Masters of the Universe. There's a new ride that's getting ready to open. Um, I believe it may have opened today, the day that I'm recording this. Um, or yesterday, but um, Guardians of the Galaxy ride. Uh, there were people that were um, annual Disney members. They were getting to ride on it as kind of a sneak peek, so we did not get to ride on it, but uh, everybody says it's one of the coolest rides ever, so um, unfortunately we did not get to ride on it. Um, I'm trying to think of what other rides were in Epcot, and off the top of my head, I'm not remembering anything super exciting, but um, we we ended up staying, I believe, at Epcot all day. No, we did leave Epcot, um, take my youngest daughter to go take a nap, and then we headed back, and then she met us there. Um, she took a bus and met us there, but by mid-afternoon, a thunderstorm came over, and it rained, and we got stuck. Um, we went to a, uh, a theater that had some uh, animated shorts and watched those. Had to wait out the rain a little while, not, not too long. And, uh, but then we stayed, ate um, Italian food, and then we stayed in, in the Italian part of Epcot and watched their fireworks, which were really cool. Um, and then we headed back, slept, and then the fourth park on a Thursday was Hollywood Studios. Hollywood Studios was my favorite. Have I told you? So Hollywood Studios was my favorite. It's kind of a tie I had between Epcot and Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom for the nostalgia, Epcot, because it was a little cooler, uh, as in cool, you know, for me. Um, and then uh, Animal Kingdom was at the bottom of the list. So Hollywood Studios was my favorite. Uh, really cool music, lots of retro stuff, retro things to buy, retro buildings, retro decoration. Um, it was kind of like having a mini Hollywood uh, studio in Florida. Uh, it had the rock and roll roller coaster, which I think is the only roller coaster in Disney World that goes upside down, um, but it's all inside in the dark, so you can't really exactly tell everything that's going on with it, but uh, it was a pretty fun roller coaster. Um, it also has, again, the Star Wars section. There were two main rides that were actually pretty cool. Um, we enjoyed those rides on the uh, Star Wars section, and then it's got the whole Toy Story Land section which had some fun stuff. And again, that little roller coaster there was pretty fun. Um, what else did Hollywood Studios have? It, uh, we ate at a retro diner that was like way retro. I mean, it was mid-century modern on steroids and the, the uh, waitresses were um, straight out of the 50s, 60s, 70s, and they wanted you to mind your manners, so they, you kind of got yelled at if you uh, had your elbows on the table, you had to clean your plate, or they wouldn't, they were kind of like, well, you can't have dessert if you don't clean your plate. Um, kind of, it, it was just fun. I can't remember the name of it. Um, it'll be in the video, but uh, it was cool. Um, a lot of the, just the stuff, the chairs and the tables and the seats, uh, 
but it had meatloaf. So at that restaurant, I got good old American meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and corn. I think that was Mm, it was close to my favorite. It was probably my second favorite meal. My favorite meal was probably the night before at Epcot where we ate at the Italian restaurant. It had the best calamari I've had in a long time. And then I just got spaghetti and meatballs, um, and they were good. But the calamari was uh, very, very good. Um, and so Hollywood Studios, we stayed... Uh, I believe the park closed at 9. It was a Thursday, and so we had to be out of there by 9. And um, we were leaving the next day. I can't remember. I think we went and shopped again that night. We did. I think we ran back over to um, Disney Springs and did some more shopping, and I went back to the Ron John surf shop. Um, so, um, trying to think of other fun things at Hollywood Studios. Um, it'll be on that video. So you guys check out that video. It's, it's a pretty fun video. What's really fun about it is a lot of the noise and background noises. Um, I snagged a lot of sound effects from iMovie. And so you're going to think a lot of the sounds were actually recorded at the amusement parks when they weren't. I, I, had, I added a lot of noises, but uh, just to kind of make it fun. But you guys, please check out that video, especially if you, number one, so if you are going to Disney and you want to kind of see what it's like, check out that video. It'll show you really quick what all the parks are like. If you have never been to Disney, um, check out that video and you'll, you it, it you know might make you decide there um i tried to include some long and not super you know i'm talking like maybe a minute or two worth of walking there is a lot of walking um so if you're out of shape or you don't like walking or if you don't like standing in line um I probably don't go to disney world uh there is pretty much lines for everything that you do uh and there is a lot of walking if you want to get all the rides in and you only have four days to do four parks. You have to walk really fast to get to all the rides. Um, we did not come close to riding all the rides. We just rode the rides that we wanted to ride and then didn't even worry about the other rides. Um, and so basically, uh, please check out that. Um, some of the, and then um, we woke up, uh, went to sleep on Thursday night, woke up Friday, grabbed some breakfast, had to head to the um, airport got on the plane no problem it took off it was raining that morning um, flew from orlando to washington dc had to you know get off and get on another plane and then washington dc to okc then at okc we grabbed a bite to eat and then had to go to my nephew's engagement party stayed there for a little while um, i had to say hey we got to get home and so i believe we got home by about 9 30 that Friday night. And then I've been playing catch up ever since. And um, in between playing catch up, I've been trying to throw that uh, video together. So um, thank you guys for checking in. I uh, hope I haven't bored you guys to death. That's just kind of a quick synopsis of our trip to Disney World. Again, I highly recommend you plan ahead, make reservations way ahead. Um, it's not like if you haven't been to Disney in a while or you've never been there, it's not like going, it is not like going to Six Flags. Um, I, think, I think Six Flags you can still literally just drive up, walk up, buy a ticket at the gate and go in and, and do whatever you want. Um, and, and that may not be the case, I don't know. But Disney is not like that. Disney is reservations reservations, reservations, and um, and plan ahead, get your wristbands and all that stuff, get all that stuff ahead of time. So uh, you guys uh, hit me up at shags at shaggyduck.com, send me an email. If you guys have been to Disney World or even Disneyland, uh, tell me about your experience, so tell me some of your favorite rides, tell me some of your secret things that you, you do. Oh, one of the fun things that I did at Magic Kingdom is I had a Susan B. Anthony dollar um, that I hid overlooking the water to the steamboat ride. Um, I stuck it there on the other side of the stone wall. And so, and I have a picture 
in the video and a picture on my Facebook page. So if you go to Magic Kingdom, if you'll check that out, it'll it'll show you kind of a clue as to where that Susan B. Anthony dollar is. And if somebody snags that, if it's still there, um, email me, shags at shaggyduck.com and let me know that you got my coin. Um, I should have done some geocaching there. We just didn't have time to do a lot of stuff. But uh, uh, send me an email, you guys. Uh, go to the YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV. Uh, if you're listening to this strictly on the podcast, don't forget you can watch me uh, doing this visually on the video and then also go to the YouTube channel just to watch that Walt Disney video. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, don't forget about Patreon. I appreciate you guys. If you guys are doing any blogging, podcasting, or uh, videoing any of that stuff on your own personal journal, please let me know. I would love to follow you guys and check out what you guys have going on. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day and weekend, and I will talk to you soon. See ya!